22 years ago, Extreme Championship Wrestling brought its unapologetic grit and brashness to the pay-per-view market for the first time, producing Barely Legal from South Philadelphia's ECW Arena. At the time, the seven-match Barely Legal was hailed as a welcome masterpiece, though opinions of the event are a bit more mixed in hindsight. While you can pick nits over the quality of the event from your own subjective viewpoint, the show really did have a little bit of everything. A big fight feel, a little controversy, mind-blowing athleticism, and a feel-good ending that put everyone to bed happy. Counting two dark matches, a total of 26 wrestlers competed across nine bouts, with the oldest wrestler on the show competing twice. Let's look back at the night ECW brought the extreme into the pay-per-view medium, and let's see where all the wrestlers are today. Mason Ryan, Stevie Ray, Earthquake, Alundra, Blaze, Norman Smiley, Zack Gowan, Bam Bam Bigelow. Ahmed Johnson, Tory Wilson, Buff, Bagwell, Robert Gibson, Dave Taylor, Terry Taylor, and Godfather's Holmes. Dwayne Gill, Adam Bomb, Michael Hayes, Cor, Von, S.A. Rios, Jim Manai, the manager from Kai and Ty, Jim Powers, Francine, Jack Swagger, Mean Gene, Fatchick Thriller, Duke the Dumpster, Oklahoma Manta! What happened to that wrestler? Someone main eventing, which leaves me lamenting. What happened to that wrestler? Something's long forgotten, but their memories live on. Louis Spicoli. Long underrated and deceptively athletic, Spicoli was in the midst of a promising run in ECW, turning heel shortly after and feuding with Tommy Dreamer. By summer's end, Spicoli left ECW, jumping ship to WCW, and becoming a bumbling sidekick to Scott Hall in the NWO. Sadly, the run was short-lived, as Spicoli, a week before he was to have wrestled Larry Zabisco at Super Brawl, died in February 1998 after overdosing on somas and wine, five days after his 27th birthday. Balls Mahoney Like Spicoli, Mahoney was a remarkable athlete for someone of his heftier build, and he and Louie crammed a lot of action into a spirited five-minute dark match the night of the event. Mahoney had only recently come aboard ECW and remained with the company until the doors were padlocked four years later. The real-life Jonathan Reckness sadly passed away in April 2016 of a heart attack at the age of 44. JT Smith Smith had been a fixture of ECW going back to its 1992 inception, going from agile underdog to unlucky klutz to wannabe Italian in the span of several years. Smith was one of the founders of the full-blooded Italians and actually worked this dark match against his old stable. Smith retired from wrestling in 1998 and as of earlier in this decade, worked as an instructional support technologist at a community college in Virginia. Chris Chetty The younger cousin of Taz was touted as the first graduate of ECW's House of Hardcore Wrestling School and for a time presented as your typical meat and potatoes babyface wrestler. Chetty persisted for much of the remainder of ECW's run, including a charming period where he enjoyed boogieing to Ricky Martin's Live in La Vida Loca. Retired since the mid-2000s, Chetty now works as a safety inspector for island companies in New York City. Little Guido The most identifiable member of the full-blooded Italians was a year into his ECW run, which he rode to the end of the company's lifespan in 2001. Whether he was Guido or Nunzio, the scrappy cruiserweight was both an accomplished submission wrestler and a comic foil that could take some very exuberant bumps. Still active at 47, Guido wrestles the occasional Northeastern Indy and wrestled a few matches in Canada in the spring of 2019. Tracy Smothers You wouldn't think that a Tennessee-born good old boy would make a natural paisan, but, well, okay, he wasn't exactly natural as a full-blooded Italian, but Smothers was damn sure entertaining in the role. Smothers and Guido made for a formidable duo in a rather memorable part of the former Young Pistol's career. Smothers is still active at age 57, wrestling the likes of D'Lo Brown and Sue Young in 2019, and even competed in Joey Janela's clustered battle royal. Bubba Ray Dudley Four weeks earlier, Bubba co-captured the first of eight tag team titles in ECW, and Barely Legal marked the night that he lost the first of those eight. Bubba goes down in history as the first man to be pinned on an ECW pay-per-view telecast, which given his devotion to the company, he'd probably take pride in. The man known today as Bully Ray is a fixture with Ring of Honor, and also co-hosts the Sirius XM radio program Busted Open. Devon Dudley Alongside Bubba, the man who hailed from the south side of Dudleyville terrorized opponents and dared fans to cross that guardrail at many a pay-per-view and event for the two years that followed Barely Legal. The night may have ended with Devon losing his first tag title, but, as noted, there were seven more reigns to come. Retired from the ring since the end of 2016, Devon currently works as a backstage producer for WWE. 
Perry Saturn. The Eliminators kicked off their third and what would be their final reign as ECW World Tag Team Champions after Saturn pinned Bubba Ray. Months later, Saturn opted to leave ECW, disbanding the Eliminators in the process, and the sadistic grappler showed up as part of Raven's flock in WCW. Saturn, in part due to repeated brain injuries, is no longer an active wrestler as of 2013, but still makes occasional public appearances at wrestling-related functions. John Cronus Saturn's partner of several years ended up having to defend the tag belts on his own in Saturn's injury absence, losing them in a handicap match that June back to the Dudleys. When Saturn departed the company, Cronus took up a brief partnership with New Jack as the Gangstonators, earning a fourth reign as tag titleist. Sadly, George Cayazzo passed away in July 2007 of heart failure, aged just 38. Lance Storm Two things stood out about Canada's most serious wrestler at this event. A blonde ponytail that will pay him any amount of money to grow back, and a pair of feeble, slow-pitched chair strikes to the head that were absolutely terrible. Barely Legal wasn't Storm's finest showing, but better days were ahead, certainly. Storm recently shut the Storm Wrestling Academy in Calgary and began working as a producer for WWE. Rob Van Dam A week before the pay-per-view, word had leaked out that Van Dam looked to be the next talented ECW star headed to one of the big two after negotiating with WCW. It was here that the arrogant Mr. Monday Night persona was engineered, thanks in part to an angle later in the night. RVD is still demonstrating his endless elasticity and agility today at age 49, working once more for Impact Wrestling. Dick Togo Call them Kai and Tai DX, or just plain Kai and Tai, but in order to acclimate the trio into ECW better, they became BWO International, getting some free shirts out of the deal. Togo was the team's powerhouse, and while they wrestled impressively, they went down in defeat after a genuine thriller. Though he retired in 2012, Togo made a comeback in 2016 and wrestles regularly today at the age of 50, primarily for Mishinoku Pro while freelancing elsewhere. Men's Teo Teo, or Terry Boy as he's sometimes referred, ended up joining Togo Togo in a later run in WWE as Kai and Tai, where they were joined by Shofunaki, the eventual number one announcer on SmackDown. It's fair to say that this six-man tag, however, was his pinnacle wrestling stateside. Now 52, Teo still wrestles on a semi-active basis, occasionally teaming with Togo over the past several years, and worked a battle royal at an event commemorating 20 years since Giant Barbar's passing. Taka Mishinoku. The standout from Kai and Tai was 23-year-old Taka, whose crisp aerial maneuvers and ability to shadow the great Sasuke move for move would bode well for him in the months ahead. Taka ended up signing with WWE later that summer and was crowned light heavyweight champion at the December In Your House, though the division would soon be relegated to the back burner. Mishinoku is still going at age 46, wrestling for New Japan as part of the Suzuki Gun stable. Gran Hamada. The feisty Hamada was 46 years old and 25 years deep into his career at the time of the Mishinoku Pro six-man tag, though he didn't look at all out of place working with men 20 years his junior. Hamada resurfaced in ECW in early 1998, working with the likes of Just Incredible and Jerry Lynn. Now 68 years old, Hamada is still semi-active, wrestling in more than a dozen matches since the start of 2015. Masato Yakushiji Originally, Gran Naniwa was supposed to be on the babyface side of the Mishinoku Pro 6-man, but an injury necessitating substituting in Yakushiji. Along with his partners, Yakushiji continued to feud with the villainous Kayantai faction for the remainder of 1997. Yakushiji retired from the ring in 2001 following a run in Osaka Pro, and his present whereabouts seemed to be largely unknown. The Great Sasuke The undisputed star of the match was Sasuke, an influential masked marvel who would have been an undeniable asset for any major promotion coveting a god-tier junior heavyweight. WWE actually did bring Sasuke in that summer to wrestle Mishinoku, but a deal was not worked out and Sasuke soon returned to Japan. Sasuke went on to have a brief political career and still wrestles with regularity at 50, performing in Mishinoku Pro and Pro Wrestling Zero One. Pitbull 2 For nearly a year, Anthony Durant was embroiled in a feud with Shane Douglas over the television title, which kicked into higher gear after Douglas injured the neck of Gary Pitbull One Wolf on more than one occasion. Durant was unsuccessful in his bid to regain the title here and never saw great heights in the company. Sadly, Durant passed away in September 2003 from an overdose of fentanyl, aged 36. Shane Douglas The franchise was one of only four men on the main card that had previously wrestled on a pay-per-view, successfully continuing his television title reign that had already reached nine months. Over the next two 
years, Douglas remained entrenched in the company's championship scene before leaving ECW in 1999. Douglas still wrestles on a semi-active basis in his mid-50s and is the host of his own series, The Triple Threat Podcast. Sabu for nearly a year and a half, ECW built the inevitable collision course between the suicidal, homicidal, genocidal Sabu and the human suplex machine Taz, making for perhaps the most anticipated clash in company history. In the end, a double turn was executed in which Sabu gained Bill Alfonso as a longtime manager. Despite years of death-defying risks, Sabu is still trucking at 54, taking part in recent matches for Impact Wrestling alongside good friend Rob Van Dam. Taz. Built up as a remorseless killing machine with a variety of suplexes and a deadly submission finisher, Taz choked Sabu out to win the long-built showdown clean as a sheet. Taz had been a stoned-faced villain for over a year, but the post-match double turn made him out to be the stoic anti-hero that ECW was looking for. Retired from the ring since 2002, Taz co-hosts the weekday morning series Taz and the Moose with Mark the Moose Malusis on CBS Sports Radio. Big Stevie Cool. The longtime comic relief was coming of age in 1997, balancing his playful sense of humor alongside his Blue World Order allies with a serious run into the main event scene. Stevie Richards departed the company before summer, however, and headed south to WCW for a brief stint as part of Raven's Flock. A longtime proponent of rehabilitative exercises, Richards runs Stevie Richards Fitness while still wrestling indies on occasion. The Sandman. You just couldn't have the first ECW pay per view without the chain smoking, cane swinging, beer guzzling, extreme icon, previously a four-time ECW world champion. The three-way dance to set up the challenger for the final match delivered the trademark violence that Barely Legal had mostly been lacking to that point, with a big assist coming from Sandman working in his element. Sandman still wrestles today on occasion, with some appearances relegated to his lengthy Enter Sandman entrance and simple beatdown of a heel. Raven. The defending ECW world champion kept Paul Heyman calm backstage when the boss feared there wouldn't be enough time to execute the main event. Raven, with a WCW run coming in the summertime, dropped the belt in the main event before finishing up with ECW in June, putting over Tommy Dreamer on the way out. In addition to wrestling on a semi-active basis, Raven hosts the Raven Effect podcast on Westwood One. Terry Funk. At age 52, Funk punctuated the night by completing a blood-soaked parlay, first outlasting Sandman and Richards, before finishing off Raven with an inside cradle to win one more world title. Funk proved to be a fighting champion too, holding the belt for four months, age and wear and tear be damned. The hardcore legend is mostly retired today, but did wrestle as recently as September 2017 at the age of 73. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. You can follow us on Twitter at Cultaholic. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Cultaholic. If you enjoy what we do here at Cultaholic, you can pledge to us on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Cultaholic. And most importantly, don't forget to hit subscribe and join us.